Chick, 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 sick. Chick, chick, chick. Chick, chick, satu dua, chick, chick. Chick, satu dua, chick, 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 chick. Chick, low. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Jadi sesuai dengan perba- uh, bahasan kemarin, di sini hari ini itu briefingnya nggak lebih dari. Tapi ketika nanti teman-teman ada pertanyaan, mau gue ditanyakan. Nah, untuk briefing hari ini itu sampai dengan kita akan ada registration sampai dengan pukul jam 7 Gitu. Jadi sebisa mungkin seluruh hal yang perlu disiapkan baik itu untuk kestari dari front desk seperti apa, placement front desknya apa aja, terus dokumen apa aja yang akan disampaikan. yang akan digunakan seperti itu itu semua disiapkan beserta souvenir souvenirnya itu jam 7 oke jam 7 semua udah clear nah di sini uh, sebelum jam 7 juga nanti harapannya PDD kemarin ada problem kira-kira sekiranya udah clear apa belum ya 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 yang koneksi terkait koneksi udah udah clear nah setelah itu Nanti kita jam 7 akan mulai registrasi dan di sini mungkin banyak koordinasi yang perlu dilakukan antara si acara bersama dengan perkap dan juga nanti selanjutnya keberlangsungan acara bisa dilaksanakan kembali untuk apa namanya koordinasinya. Nah untuk teman-teman semua di sini aku izin serahkan ke setiap divisi. Silakan mungkin ada yang ingin memberikan checklist apa saja yang sudah selesai dan juga yang masih tulis. Mungkin mungkin dari perkap terlebih dahulu. Uh, selamat pagi teman-teman uh, aku dari aku pasti dari pertap mungkin yang perlu yang masih PR itu frontage masih belum aku belum tahu layoutnya mau kayak gimana perlu printer atau perlu apa gitu uh, uh, alat-alat bukannya ada di ruangan panitia di sini tinggal diambil aja terus mungkin sama uh, sponsorship sponsorship itu kemarin requestnya aku cuma minta kabel olor minta tolong nanti ada di sebelah kanan terus apa lagi foto boot masih di bak- masih di udah itu cukup dari aku nah ya proyektor kan ada PIC dari tiap message ya minta tolong dicekin boleh nggak ya. oke okay. terima kasih buat Farki untuk si perkap selanjutnya mungkin dari Akmal monggo dari teman-teman PDD ada yang ingin disampaikan yang kemarin disampaikan to do list-nya gimana sekarang? Oke okay, buat PDD, uh, tadi malam masalahnya terkait yang uh, video yang perlu itu ternyata itu uh, emang harus streaming-nya langsung di Youtube, gak perlu kakek media okay. zoom, jadi link-nya langsung disebar aja itu jadi uh, kualitasnya bisa sampai sejelapan bro, cuma ya uh, uh, tergantungannya sih juga, ya. semoga ini okay. Terus sama buat uh, apa namanya transisi transisi semua udah oke? Okay? Transisi udah oke. Okay. Ketika panitia nanti masuk nggak nggak masuk ini ya? Iya. Di... Cuma ini uh, personalnya masih satu ini. Oke. Okay, berarti nanti ya. perlu briefing mentah ya. lanjutan gitu ya? Iya perlu briefing lanjutan ini buat siapa? Oke. Thank you untuk teman-teman perkap. Selanjutnya mungkin dari Kesari. Ada yang mau disampaikan? Ada yang belum? Sekarangnya terkait jendela masa, sudah semua, sudah ready semua SD, apa SD card dan lain-lain, sudah dimasukin semua Jadi SD card-nya tinggal dimasukin Front desk, untuk placement dan juga dokumen-dokumen sudah dimasukin semua Langsung tinggal berdepan berarti Terus ada lagi untuk sertifikat-sertifikat itu sudah semua Terus Apa lagi? Pak Sigit sama Pak Tarsi 
kebutuhan daripada status acara monggo nanti teman-teman bisa langsung ke meja sebelah bagian apa ini timur barat bagian timur dan nanti teman-teman tolong di belakang ketika jam 7 sudah mulai ketika jam 7 sudah mulai harapannya teman-teman gak ada yang warawiri di sini kalau misalnya mau keluar langsung keluar lewat belakang atau lewat depan gitu jangan sampai ada yang jalan dari belakang ke depan atau dari depan ke belakang dari dalam karena di luar ada akses gitu ya oke okay, clear jam 7 semua frontage harus sudah ready semua souvenir sudah ready diberikan kepada semua registrasi dan juga di sini untuk seluruh uh, proyektor nanti akan langsung di tes seperti itu oke okay? mungkin itu aja untuk briefing hari ini uh, briefing pagi ini kurang lebihnya mohon maaf oh ya alangkah baiknya kita doa bersama seperti itu di sini kita doa okay. uh, mungkin saya izin untuk kita awali hari ini dengan berdoa secara bersama-sama Ada waktu? Masih Pak? Iya uh, Sesuai dengan arahan Kemarin akan dilaksanakan doa secara bersama-sama Agar kegiatan hari ini bisa berjalan dengan lancar Berdoa menurut kepercayaan masing-masing Berdoa dipersilakan Baik tidak kata cukup untuk berdoa, kurang lebihnya mohon maaf. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. education, research, and social contributions to that graduates with high quality, competence, and professional in materials engineering and technology, as well as developing global networking to support national industry's competitiveness, is the mission of our department. The Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering, Institute Technology 10 November, has Bachelor and Master Program study with specialization on Advanced Materials and Materials Computation, Material Selection and Application, Extractive Metallurgy and Materials Processing,
you ever wonder what makes a life-changing history? Right, a solid mission of the visionaries. It was Dr. Anka and his colleagues' mission to accelerate technology development through the establishment of Institute Technology Sapulu Nopemba. Their goodwill has encouraged ITS students to take important roles in both local and global communities. Ministers, CEOs, professors, entrepreneurs, and yes, another history maker. These successful alumni were trained in a healthy learning environment that was equipped with various supporting facilities.
What makes a life-changing history? Right, a solid mission of the visionaries. It was Dr. Anka and his colleagues' mission to accelerate technology development. Through the establishment of Institute Technology, Sepulu Nopemba, their goodwill has encouraged ITS students to take important roles in both local and global communities. Ministers, CEOs, professors, entrepreneurs, and yes, another history maker. These successful alumni were trained in a healthy learning environment that was equipped with various supporting facilities. of ITS were formed to be the best place to learn science, technology, and design. Seven faculties and one interdisciplinary school. Scientists, Faculty of Science and Data Analytics. MarTech, Faculty of Marine Technology. INSYS, Faculty of Industrial Technology and Systems Engineering. Electics. Faculty of Intelligent Electrical and Informatics Technology. Civ Plan. Faculty of Civil, Planning and Geoengineering. Creatives. Faculty of Creative Design and Digital Business. Vocation, Faculty of Vocation, and Interdisciplinary School of Management and Technology. Recognized as one of the top best-ranked institutes doesn't mean the finish line for ITS. To gain greater international recognition, ITS launched an international undergraduate program. Students can get wider international exposure through 20 study programs they can apply. The chances are also open for professors from all over the world to teach and conduct research at ITS. These opportunities have made international joint research and other international activities successfully performed. Like IUP, students and lecturers from other programs have also contributed to the ITS achievements. Exemplify Institute's excellent performance. But technology and academic excellence is not the only goal of the Institute. Students are guided to apply their knowledge for the welfare of society. ITS, Institute Technology, Sepulu Nopemba. Materials engineering is frontier knowledge that opened the door to the new technologies.
In materials and metallurgical engineering, we can create new materials that never made before, understand how it works, and make it better. The Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering has a vision to become an innovative department that has expertise and global competence on materials engineering and technology to develop industries and networking, providing education, research, and social contributions to result graduates with high quality, competence, and professional in materials engineering and technology, as well as developing global networking to support national industry competitiveness is the mission of our department. The Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering Institute Technology 10 November has bachelor and master program study with specialization on advanced materials and materials computation, material selection and application, extractive metallurgy and materials processing, corrosion and DT and failure of materials, and materials and manufacturing techniques. Under the Faculty of Industrial Technology and System Engineering, the degree program is designed for two years or four semesters with 12 high-qualified lecturers that facilitate interactive teaching learning environment and enable in-class discussion. Familiarizing the students with independent academic research and writing plays a vital role in the program. Therefore, the study program provides library, discussion spaces, classroom with smart facilities, and six laboratories where the lecturers are affiliated that are Materials Innovation Laboratory, Metallurgy Manufacturing Laboratory, Materials and Mineral Processing Laboratory, Corrosion and Materials Failure Laboratory, Materials Chemistry Laboratory, and Materials Physics Laboratory. Many projects conducted in laboratories are connected with industries that allow students to directly interact and having experience with partner industries. Now our study program is going further to be internationally recognized. To meet with demands of high standard from both national and international stakeholders, our study program has clearly reformulated its educational objective and learning outcomes. The objective of this program produce graduate with the following competencies. One, graduate who are able to independently develop and apply their knowledge to solve problems within their professional practice using principle of material science and metallurgical engineering. Two, graduate who have good moral personality and leadership with capabilities of communication, effective work in national and international context, and doing continuous self-improvement. Three, graduates who are able to conduct investigation by means of analysis, modeling, and experiment, including project evaluation, considering the social, ethical, ecological, logical and economic implications as well as the basic requirements of the project. There are six program learning outcomes that are designed with lecturers, alumni and stakeholders based on the national standard of higher education that equal to level 8 of the Indonesian qualification framework. The learning process in the group program results in high quality graduates that works as engineer, practitioner, industrialist, entrepreneur, research scientists as well as academician in institution or industry across the world. Last but not least, our study program is also proud with its student achievements. One notable achievement is our student achievement in developing and building a competition racing car with hydrogen fuel cell called as Antasena.
a solid mission of the visionaries. It was Dr. Anka and his colleagues' mission to accelerate technology development. Through the establishment of Institute Technology Sepulu Nopemba, their goodwill has encouraged ITS students to take important roles in both local and global communities. Ministers, CEOs, professors, entrepreneurs, and yes, another history maker. These successful alumni were trained in a healthy learning environment that was equipped with various supporting facilities. place to learn science, technology, and design. Seven faculties and one interdisciplinary school. Scientists, faculty of science and data analytics. MarTech, faculty of marine technology. INSYS, faculty of industrial technology and systems engineering. Electics, Faculty of Intelligent Electrical and Informatics Technology. Civ Plan, Faculty of Civil, Planning, and Geoengineering. Creatives, Faculty of Creative Design and Digital Business. Vocation, Faculty of Vocation and Interdisciplinary School of Management and Technology. Recognized as one of the top best-ranked institutes doesn't mean a finish line for ITS. To gain greater international recognition, ITS launched an international undergraduate program Students can get wider international exposure through 20 study programs they can apply. The chances are also open for professors from all over the world to teach and conduct research at ITS. These opportunities have made international joint research and other international activities successfully performed. Like IUP, students and lecturers from other programs have also contributed to the ITS achievements. Appreciations earned exemplify Institute's excellent performance. The technology and academic excellence is not the only goal of the Institute. Students are guided to apply their knowledge for the welfare of society. Institute Technology, Sepulu November. Materials Engineering is fronting knowledge that open the door to the new technologies. In materials and metallurgical engineering, we can create new materials that never made before. Yeah. 
understand how it works and make it better. The Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering has a vision to become an innovative department that has expertise and global competence on materials engineering and technology to develop industries and networking, providing education, research, and social contributions to result graduates with high quality, competence, and professional in materials engineering and technology, as well as developing global networking to support national industry competitiveness is the mission of our department. The Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering, Institute Technology Sepuluh November, has bachelor and master program study with specialization on advanced materials and materials computation, material selection and application, extractive metallurgy and materials processing, corrosion and DT and failure of materials, and materials and manufacturing techniques. Under the Faculty of Industrial Technology and System Engineering, the degree program is designed for two years or four semesters with 12 high-qualified lecturers that facilitate interactive teaching learning environment and enable in-class discussion. Familiarizing the students with independent academic process plays a better role in the program. Therefore, the study program provides library, discussion spaces, classroom with smart facilities, and six laboratories where the lecturers are affiliated that are Materials Innovation Laboratory, Metallurgy Manufacturing Laboratory, Materials and Mineral Processing Laboratory, Corrosion and Materials Value Laboratory, Materials Chemistry Laboratory, and Materials Physics Laboratory. Many projects conducted in laboratories are connected with industries that allow students to directly interact and having experience with partner industries. Now our study program is going further to be internationally recognized. To meet with demands of high standard from both national and international stakeholders, our study program has clearly reformulated its educational objective and learning outcomes. The objective of this program produce graduate with the following competencies. One, graduate who are able to independently develop and apply their knowledge to solve problems within their professional practice using principles of material science and technological engineering. Two, graduate who have good moral personality and leadership with capabilities of communication, effective work in national and international context, and doing continuous self-improvement. Three, graduates who are able to conduct investigation by means of analysis, modeling, and experiment, including project evaluation considering the social, ethical, ecological, and economic implications as well as the basic requirements of the project. There are six program learning outcomes that are designed with lecturers, alumni, and stakeholders based on the national standard of higher education that equal to level 8 of the Indonesian qualification framework. The learning process in the group program results in high-quality graduates that works as engineer, practitioner, industrialist, entrepreneur, research scientist, as well as academician in institution or industry across the world. Last but not least, our study program is also proud with its student achievements. One notable achievement is our student achievement in developing and building a competition racing car with hydrogen fuel cell called as Antasena. It was Dr. Anka 
and his colleagues' mission to accelerate technology development. Through the establishment of Institute Technology Sepulu Nopemba, Sepulu Nopemba. Their goodwill has encouraged ITS students to take important roles in both local and global communities. Ministers, CEOs, professors, entrepreneurs, and yes, another history maker. These successful alumni were trained in a healthy learning environment that was equipped with various supporting facilities. systems engineer. Electics, faculty of intelligent electrical and informatics technology. Civ plan, faculty of civil planning and geoengineering. Creatives, faculty of creative design and digital business. Vocation, Faculty of Vocation and Interdisciplinary School of Management and Technology. Recognized as one of the top best ranked institutes doesn't mean the finish line for ITS. To gain greater international recognition, ITS launched an international undergraduate program. Students can get wider international exposure through 20 study programs they can apply. The chances are also open for professors from all over the world to teach and conduct research at ITS. These opportunities have made international joint research and other international activities successfully performed. Like IUP, students and lecturers from other programs have also contributed to the ITS achievements.
because to note a new life-changing history, technology must advance humanity. ITS, Institute Technology, Sapulo November. Materials Engineering is frontier knowledge that opened the door to the new technologies. In Materials and Metallurgical Engineering, we can create new materials that never made before, understand how it works, and make it better. The Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering has a vision to become an innovative department that has expertise and global competence on materials engineering and technology to develop industries and networking, providing education, research, and social contributions to result graduates with high quality, competence, and professional in materials engineering and technology, as well as developing global networking to support national industry competitiveness is the mission of our department. The Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering Institute Technology 10 November has bachelor and master program study with specialization on advanced materials and materials computation, material selection and application, extractive metallurgy and materials processing, corrosion and DT and failure of materials, and materials and manufacturing techniques. Under the Faculty of Industrial Technology and System Engineering, the degree program is designed for two years or four semesters with 12 high qualified lecturers that facilitate interactive teaching learning environment and enable in class discussion. Familiarizing the students with independent academic research and writing plays a vital role in the program. Therefore, the study program provides library, discussion spaces, classroom with smart facilities, and six laboratories where the lecturers are affiliated that are Materials Innovation Laboratory, Metallurgy Manufacturing Laboratory, Materials and Mineral Processing Laboratory, Corrosion and Materials Failure Laboratory, Materials Chemistry Laboratory, and Materials Physics Laboratory. Many projects conducted in laboratories are connected with industries that allow students to directly interact and having experience with partner industries. Now our study program is going further to be internationally recognized. To meet with demands of high standard from both national and international stakeholders, our study program has clearly reformulated its educational objective and learning outcomes. The objective of this program produce graduate with the following competencies. One, graduate who are able to independently develop and apply their knowledge to solve problems within their professional practice using principle of material science and metallurgical engineering. Two, graduate who have good moral personality and leadership with capabilities of communication, effective work in national and international context, and doing continuous self-improvement. Three, graduates who are able to conduct investigation by means of analysis, modeling, and experiment, including project evaluation considering the social, ethical, ecological, and economic implications as well as the basic requirements of the project. There are six program learning outcomes that are designed with lecturers, alumni, and stakeholders based on the national standard of higher education that equal to level 8 of the Indonesian qualification framework. The learning process in the group program results in high-quality graduates that works as engineer, practitioner, industrialist, entrepreneur, research scientist, as well as academician in institution or industry across the world. Last but not least, our study program is also proud with its student achievements. One notable achievement is our student achievement in developing and building a competition racing car with hydrogen fuel cell called as Antasena.
was Dr. Anka and his colleagues' mission to accelerate technology development. Through the establishment of Institute Technology Sapulu Nopemba, their goodwill has encouraged ITS students to take important roles in both local and global communities. Ministers, CEOs, professors, entrepreneurs, and yes, another history maker. These successful alumni were trained in a healthy learning environment that was equipped with various supporting facilities. systems engineering. Electics, Faculty of Intelligent Electrical and Informatics Technology. Civ Plan, Faculty of Civil, Planning and Geoengineering. Creatives, Faculty of Creative Design and Digital Business. Vocation, Faculty of Vocation and Interdisciplinary School of Management and Technology. Recognized as one of the top best ranked institutes doesn't mean the finish line for ITS. To gain greater international recognition, ITS launched an international undergraduate program Students can get wider international exposure through 20 study programs they can apply. The chances are also open for professors from all over the world to teach and conduct research at ITS. opportunities have made international joint research and other international activities successful to perform. Like IUP, students and lecturers from other programs have also contributed to the ITS achievements. Sapulu Nopemba. Materials engineering is frontier knowledge that opened the door to the new technologies. In materials and metallurgical engineering, we can create new materials that never made before, understand how it works, and make it better. 
the Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering has a vision to become an innovative department that has expertise and global competence on materials engineering and technology to develop industries and networking, providing education, research, and social contributions to result graduates with high quality, competence, and professional in materials engineering and technology, as well as developing global networking to support national industry competitiveness is the mission of our department. The Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering, Institute Technology 10 November, has Bachelor and Master Program study with specialization on Advanced Materials and Materials Computation, Material Selection and Application, Extractive Metallurgy and Materials Processing, Corrosion and DT and Failure of Materials, and Materials and Manufacturing Techniques. Under the Faculty of Industrial Technology and System Engineering, the degree program is designed for two years or four semesters with 12 high-qualified lecturers that facilitate interactive teaching learning environment and enable in-class discussion. Familiarizing the students with independent academic research and writing plays a vital role in the program. Therefore, the study program provides library, discussion spaces, classroom with smart facilities, and six laboratories where the lecturers are affiliated that are Materials Innovation Laboratory, Metallurgy Manufacturing Laboratory, Materials and Mineral Processing Laboratory, Corrosion and Materials Failure Laboratory, Materials Chemistry Laboratory, and Materials Physics Laboratory. Many projects conducted in laboratories are connected with industries that allow students to directly interact and having experience with partner industries. Now our study program is going further to be internationally recognized. To meet with demands of high standard from both national and international stakeholders, our study program has clearly reformulated its educational objective and learning outcomes. The objective of this program produce graduate with the following competencies. One, graduate who are able to independently develop and apply their knowledge to solve problems within their professional practice using principle of material science and metallurgical engineering. Two, graduate who have good moral personality and leadership with capabilities of communication, effective work in national and international context, and doing continuous self-improvement. Three, graduates who are able to conduct investigation by means of analysis, modeling, and experiment, including project evaluation considering the social, ethical, ecological, and economic implications as well as the basic requirements of the project. There are six program learning outcomes that are designed with lecturers, alumni, and stakeholders based on the national standard of higher education that equal to level 8 of the Indonesian qualification framework. The learning process in the group program results in high-quality graduates that works as engineer, practitioner, industrialist, entrepreneur, research scientist, as well as academician in institution or industry across the world. Last but not least, our study program is also proud with its student achievements. A notable achievement is our student achievement in developing and building a competition racing car with hydrogen fuel cell called as Antasena. Mission to accelerate technology development 
through the establishment of Institute Technology Sapulu Nopemba. Their goodwill has encouraged ITS students to take important roles in both local and global communities. Ministers, CEOs, professors, entrepreneurs, and yes, another history maker. These successful alumni were trained in a healthy learning environment that was equipped with various supporting facilities. systems engineering. Electics, Faculty of Intelligent Electrical and Informatics Technology. Civ Plan, Faculty of Civil, Planning and Geoengineering. Creatives, Faculty of Creative Design and Digital Business. Vocation, Faculty of Vocation and Interdisciplinary School of Management and Technology. Recognized as one of the top best ranked institutes doesn't mean the finish line for ITS. To gain greater international recognition, ITS launched international undergraduate program Students can get wider international exposure through 20 study programs they can apply. The chances are also open for professors from all over the world to teach and conduct research at ITS. These opportunities have made international joint research and other international activities successful to perform. Like IUP, students and lecturers from other programs have also contributed to the ITS achievements. Technology, Sopulo Nopemba. Materials Engineering is fronting knowledge that opened the door to the new technologies. In materials and metallurgical engineering, we can create new materials that never made before, understand how it works, and make it better. The Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering has a vision 
to become an innovative department that has expertise and global competence on materials engineering and technology to develop industries and networking, providing education, research, and social contributions to result graduates with high quality, competence, and professional in materials engineering and technology, as well as developing global networking to support national industry competitiveness, is the mission of our department. The Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering, Institute of Technology, 10 November, has bachelor and master program study with specialization on advanced materials and materials computation, material selection and application, extractive metallurgy and materials processing, corrosion and DTM failure of materials, and materials and manufacturing techniques. Under the Faculty of Industrial Technology and System Engineering, the degree program is designed for two years or four semesters with 12 high-qualified lecturers that facilitate interactive teaching learning environment and enable in-class discussion. Familiarizing the students with independent academic research and writing plays a vital role in the program. Therefore, the study program provides library, discussion spaces, classroom with smart facilities, and six laboratories where the lecturers are affiliated that are Materials Innovation Laboratory Metallurgy Manufacturing Laboratory Materials and Mineral Processing Laboratory Corrosion and Materials Failure Laboratory Materials Chemistry Laboratory and Materials Physics Laboratory. Many projects conducted in laboratories are connected with industries that allow students to directly interact and having experience with partner industries. Now our study program is going further to be internationally recognized to meet with demands of high standard from both national and international stakeholders our study program has clearly reformulated its educational objective and learning outcomes. The objective of this program produce graduates with the following competencies. One, graduates who are able to independently develop and apply their knowledge to solve problems within their professional practice using principle of material science and technological engineering. Two, graduates who have good moral personality and leadership with capabilities of communication, effective work in national and international context, and doing continuous self-improvement. Three, graduates who are able to conduct investigation by means of analysis, modeling, and experiment, including project evaluation considering the social, ethical, ecological, and economic implications as well as the basic requirements of the project. There are six program learning outcomes that are designed with lecturers, alumni, and stakeholders based on the national standard of higher education that equal to level 8 of the Indonesian qualification framework. The learning process in the group program results in high-quality graduates that works as engineer, practitioner, industrialist, entrepreneur, research scientist, as well as academician in institution or industry across the world. Last but not least, our study program is also proud with its student achievements. A notable achievement is our student achievement in developing and building a competition racing car with hydrogen fuel cell called as Antasena. Of Institute Technology, Sepulu November, 
Their goodwill has encouraged ITS students to take important roles in both local and global communities. Ministers, CEOs, professors, entrepreneurs, and yes, another history maker. These successful alumni were trained in a healthy learning environment that was equipped with various supporting facilities. systems engineer. Electics, faculty of intelligent electrical and informatics technology. Civ plan, faculty of civil, planning, and geoengineering. Creatives, faculty of creative design and digital business. Vocation, Faculty of Vocation and Interdisciplinary School of Management and Technology. Recognized as one of the top best ranked institutes doesn't mean the finish line for ITS. To gain greater international recognition, ITS launched international undergraduate program Students can get wider international exposure through 20 study programs they can apply. The chances are also open for professors from all over the world to teach and conduct research at ITS. Opportunities have made international joint research and other international activities successfully performed. Like IUP, students and lecturers from other programs have also contributed to the ITS achievements. Technology, Sepulo November. Materials Engineering is forging knowledge that opens the door to the new technologies. In Materials and Metallurgical Engineering, we can create new materials that never made before, understand how it works, and make it better. The Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering has a vision to become an innovative department that has expertise and global competence 
on materials engineering and technology to develop industries and networking, providing education, research, and social contributions to result graduates with high quality, competence, and professional in materials engineering and technology, as well as developing global networking to support national industry competitiveness is the mission of our department. The Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering Institute Technology 10 November has bachelor and master program study with specialization on advanced materials and materials computation, material selection and application, extractive metallurgy and materials processing, corrosion and DT and failure of materials, and materials and manufacturing techniques. Under the Faculty of Industrial Technology and System Engineering, the degree program is designed for two years or four semesters with 12 high-qualified lecturers that facilitate interactive teaching learning environment and enable in-class discussion. Familiarizing the students with independent academic research and writing plays a vital role in the program. Therefore, the study program provides library, discussion spaces, classroom with smart facilities, and six laboratories where the lecturers are affiliated that are Materials Innovation Laboratory, Metallurgy Manufacturing Laboratory, Materials and Mineral Processing Laboratory, Corrosion and Materials Failure Laboratory, Materials Chemistry Laboratory, and Materials Physics Laboratory. Many projects conducted in laboratories are connected with industries that allow students to directly interact and having experience with partner industries. Now, our study program is going further to be internationally recognized. To meet with demands of high standard from both national and international stakeholders, our study program has clearly reformulated its educational objective and learning outcomes. The objective of this program produce graduate with the following competencies. One, graduate who are able to independently develop and apply their knowledge to solve problems within their professional practice using principle of material science and metallurgical engineering. Two, graduate who have good moral personality and leadership with capabilities of communication, effective work in national and international context, and doing continuous self-improvement. Three, graduates who are able to conduct investigation by means of analysis, modeling, and experiment, including project evaluation, considering the social, ethical, ecological, logical and economic implications as well as the basic requirements of the project. There are six program learning outcomes that are designed with lecturers, alumni and stakeholders based on the national standard of higher education that equal to level 8 of the Indonesian qualification framework. The learning process in degree program results in high quality graduates that works as engineer, practitioner, industrialist, entrepreneur, research scientists as well as academician in institution or industry across the world. Last but not least, our study program is also proud with its student achievements. A notable achievement is our student achievement in developing and building a competition racing car with hydrogen fuel cell called as Antasena. Institute Technology, Sepulu November. Their goodwill has encouraged ITS students to take important roles in both local and global communities, ministries, CEOs, 
professors, entrepreneurs, and yes, another history maker. These successful alumni were trained in a healthy learning environment that was equipped with various supporting facilities. systems engineering. Electics, Faculty of Intelligent Electrical and Informatics Technology. Civ Plan, Faculty of Civil, Planning and Geoengineering. Creatives, Faculty of Creative Design and Digital Business. Vocation, Faculty of Vocation and Interdisciplinary School of Management and Technology. Recognized as one of the top best ranked institutes doesn't mean the finish line for ITS. To gain greater international recognition, ITS launched an international undergraduate program Students can get wider international exposure through 20 study programs they can apply. The chances are also open for professors from all over the world to teach and conduct research at ITS. These opportunities have made international joint research and other international activities successfully performed. Like IUP, students and lecturers from other programs have also contributed to the ITS achievements. your attention please. Our opening ceremony is about to begin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom. Om Swastiastu. Namo Buddhaya. Salam Kebajikan. A greeting of peace for all of us. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. The Materials and Metallurgical Engineering Department of Institute of Technology 10 November is pleased to welcome all of you to the 5th International Conference on Materials and Metallurgical Engineering and Technology 2022 held at Research Center ITAS. This year, ECOMET adopts the theme of Advancing the Role of Materials and Metallurgical Innovation and Technology in the Digital Transformation Era to Reach a Sustainable World. First of all, let us introduce ourselves as your Master of Ceremonies on this international conference. It is a great honor for me, Faisal, alongside with my partner, Oriza, to be standing here and welcoming you. Before we proceed to our agenda, we would like to express our sincere gratitude to the Excellencies for here today. Bapak Juari, SD, ME, PhD, as the Vice Dean of the Faculty of Industrial Technology and System, Engineering, ITS. Bapak Sigitri Wicaksono, SSI, MSI, PhD, 
as the Department Head of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering, and Bapak Sutarsis, SD, MSc, PhD, as the Chairman of Ecomet 2022. Thank you for being present today with all of us. It is a huge blessing for all of us to gather here at the Research Center in a healthy condition. Thank you to all contributors and participants of Ecomet 2022 for making this event possible. Starting from the honorable keynote speakers, invited speakers, and all stakeholders. Thank you to the sponsors who have supported our event, PT Metrom Indonesia and PT Garda Multi Solusi Technica. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to read the agenda for today. The first agenda is the opening session followed by singing of the ITAS hymn and national anthem. Second, special welcoming performance by Unit Kegiatan Tari dan Karawitan ITS. Third, opening speeches from the Chairman, Head of Department, and Vice Dean of Faculty. Fourth, symbolic official opening of Ecomet 2022. Fifth, the two keynote sessions from inspiring speakers then closed by three parallel sessions and coffee break in between. As for tomorrow's agenda, there will be three keynote speaker sessions, followed by parallel sessions and the closing ceremony that includes another special performance and the long-awaited awarding session. Distinguished delegates, over the next two days, this conference will provide you plenty of opportunities to discuss, share knowledge and insights, specifically about materials and metallurgical engineering technology. Now, to begin this conference, we would like to engage all the participants in this conference to stand up and commemorate our independence as Indonesia and sing our song of honor, Indonesia Raya and the ITS hymn.
Thank you. We allow you to return back to your seats. Next up, in honor of ECOMA 2022 that starts today, we invite Unit Kegiatan Tari dan Karawitan ITS, a student-led club specialized in dancing, to give a welcoming performance to the honorable guests and participants. The dance they will be presenting is called the Tari Gamyong. To tell you the history of this dance, the Gamyong dance is performed during the planting and harvesting seasons for rice. The purpose of this dance is for fertility and a bountiful harvest in gratitude for the harvest season. This is hoped to symbolize the activities we will have that will be bountiful of knowledge and collaboration. Without further ado, let's welcome Unit Kegiatan Tari dan Karawitan ITS performing Tari Gambyong.
thank you to UKTK ITS for the beautiful performance of Tari Gabyong. What do you think of the performance, Ori? I was very mesmerized and I think the audiences are too. I loved how the story conveyed the wish of fertility and a bountiful harvest through amazing dance moves. Once again, let's give another round of applause for UKTK ITS! What's next after this, Faisal? After this, we will be having the opening speeches. For the first opening speech, it is my deep pleasure to introduce His Excellencies, Bapak Sutarsis, SD, MSc, PhD, as the Chairman of ECOMED 2022, to deliver the welcoming speech. This is the Chairman of ECOMED. Please give a warm applause. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning ladies and gentlemen Thank you to each and every one of you for being here today at this seminar My name is Sutarsis It is such an honor to for me to speak on behalf of the organizer Let me begin by giving you Warm welcome to International Conference on Material and Metallurgical Engineering and Technology, ECOMET 2022. Before we get started, I am very thankful to our keynote speaker, Dr. Wahyu Bambang Widianto, Head of Advanced Material Research Center, BRIM. Republic of Indonesia. Professor Dr. Testu Yakida from Kumamoto University. Professor Dr. Marsiati Jafar from University Saint Malaysia. Professor Dr. Muhammad Fatuhi from TU Delft, Netherlands. Professor Dr. Sungging Kintawantoro from Institute Technology, 10 November, Surabaya for taking time out of your busy schedule to attend this event. I also wish to thank the ITS representative, Dr. Juari, as a Vice Dean of Faculty of Industrial Technology and System Engineering, ETS, for many kind of support. I would like also uh, I will also like to express my appreciation to participants from various university for attending and uh, contribution in this seminar. My appreciation should also be addressed to invited speaker, DTM and management, advisor, faculty member, committee, and sponsor, who generously helped us make this seminar become true. We could not have done it without you. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's seminar, the committee has already accepted up to 120 abstract and manuscripts that were distributed in 11 main topics. ECOMET 2022 carries the theme Advancing the Role of Material and Metallurgical Innovation and Technology in the Digital Transformation Era to reach sustainable world. The theme was chosen because material science and technology have applied, played a major role in creating better life for human from past, present, and the future. Well, I don't want to take too much your time. So I would like 
to see once more on behalf of the seminar organizer. Welcome. It is great to see so many of you here. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you to Bapak Sutarsis for the opening speech. Excellencies, without further ado, we would like to now invite to the podium the Head of Material and Metallurgical Engineering Department who made this international conference possible. To Bapak Sigit Triwicaksono, SSI, MSI, PhD, you're welcome at the stage. Please give a warm applause. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Distinguished guests, respected colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, allow me in this opportunity to greet all of these conference participants by first praying our grateful and praise to the Almighty God for all His blessings, grace, and mercies that have made us possible together here in this forum in excellent conditions and health. In particular, I would like to extend my gratitude to distinguished guests. First of, first of all, please allow me to express my sincere appreciation for coming to ICOMET 2022 for Dr. Dr. Wahyu Bambang Udiato, Head of Advanced Material Research Center Green, Professor Jesu Akida, Kumamutu University, Japan, Professor Insinyur Dr. Mirati Safar, University of Science, Malaysia, Assistant Professor Muhammad Kotohi, EU Delft, Netherlands, Vice Dean uh, Dr. Juwari, Bapak Sutarsis, PSG, Chairman of ICOMES 2022, Professor Dr. Susiono GA from ITS, Associate Professor Sumbing Pitawatoro from ITS, Professor Dr. Husaini Ardi from ITB, Professor Dr. Insinyur Johnny Wahyuadi, DEA from UI, Professor Dr. Ria Lina Yustianti, MSI, from University Sultan Agung Tirtayasa, and Dr. Engineering Hario Satrio Octaviano, Octaviano sorry, from PT Pertamina, Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, with advance of technology, the distance is borderless to continue developing knowledge from experts in science and technology around the world. At present, metallurgical materials and technology have been developed comprehensively, not only in manufacturing technology, but also in other fields such as biomaterials, modeling, energy, structural and smart materials, sensors, and other advanced material applications. Materials evolve over a wide range of these of its applications, from a very small nanoscale materials, manufacturing or processing, that mostly applied in electronics and biomedical devices to giant metallurgical manufacturing. In line with our department vision to become an innovative department that has expertise and global competence on materials engineering and technology to develop industry and networking through educational research and community services to support the national industrial com competitiveness. Therefore, we are concerning to help the international conference in, in every two years. As the theme of this conference is advancing the role of materials and metallurgical innovation and technology in the digital transformation era, to reach a sustainable world. Through this forum, we may discuss and share ideas about new trends in metallurgical materials and technology, and at the same time, build strong reciprocal relationship and cooperation between academicians, 
scientists, researchers, and practitioners. Finally, I'd like to congratulate the committee on their tremendous effort to physically host the fifth ICOMEC 2022. The last but not least, we wish all participants will expand the network and transform new ideas obtained into many research innovations. Thank you very much. Stay safe, health, and productive, and have a nice meeting. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Bapak Sigit, for the opening speech. Lastly, I would like to humbly call on the Excellency, Bapak Juwari, ST, MA, PhD, as the Vice Dean of the Faculty of Industrial Technology and System Engineering ITS, to give the final opening speech and afterward, we would like to request the De Vice Dean of Faculty of INSIS to officially open the 5th International Conference on Materials and Metallurgical Engineering Technology. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Vice Dean of Faculty of INSIS. Please give a warm applause. Representing the team, uh, Dr. Wawan Aris Widodo, greeting from him. Thanks for the Thanks God for the presence of the Almighty God, and with the abundance of His grace, we can meet in the good health. Our Honorable, our distinguished guest, Dr. Wahyu Bambang Diatno from Head of Advanced Material Research Center, BRIN, Prof. T. Suya Ida from Kumamoto University, Japan, Professor Dr. Insinyur Mariati Java from University Saint Malaysia, Associate Professor Muhammad Patuhi from PU Delft, Netherlands, uh, Professor Dr. Husseini Adi from Institute Technology Bandung, Professor Dr. Joni Wahyu Adi from University Indonesia. Professor Dr. Erlina Yustanti from University Sultan Agung Tirtayasa, Dr. Eng Haryo Satria Oktavianu from PT Pertamina Indonesia, and also special for our senior lecture, Bapak uh, Sadino, Bapak Farid, Bapak Wahid and all of the uh, faculty member department material and metallurgical engineering ITS. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to host the fifth ICOMET in, in International Conference on Material and Metallurgical Engineering and Technology 2022 as it provides unique opportunity for respectable researchers, experts, scholars, early stage researchers, students, and even policy makers to share ideas on hot issue and trending topic in material science and technology. The ICOMET is 
also aim to establish frameworks as well as international collaboration among universities in Indonesia and worldwide researchers, especially to facilitate research publication by Indonesian students and scholars in reputable international journals. I think it is undoubtful that the crucial step to pave the way for university to gain international recognition, it must be indexed international. We got and understand this challenge. We do believe that such conference like ECOMET can be considered as potential I'm sure the challenge and make this conference prestige. So we would like to thank Dr. Sigit Triwicaksono as head of department, Dr. Sutarsis as chairman of ICOMET 2022 for very well organized the fifth international conference on material and metallurgical engineering and technology 2022. Of course, we also appreciate to all professors, all staff and students of Department of Material and Metallurgical Engineering make the event very great. To all keynote speakers, the invite parallel speakers, to all participants, we thank you very much. And this is the key of successful of such conference. Last but not least, to all stakeholders and sponsors that have shared significant contributions to make this event possible. We thank you all enjoying this series of events and best of best uh, and good luck for you all. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Bapak Juwari, for the opening speech. We would like to ask you to remain on the stage to proceed our next agenda, which is the symbolic official opening of ECOMET 2022. As for the symbolic opening, we would like to ask Bapak Juwari to hit the gong to officially open this international conference. To Bapak Juwari, kindly do the honor of officially opening the 5th International Conference on Materials and Metallurgical Engineering and Technology 2022. You may hit the gong. Okay. <coughs> okay, uh, with Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, we open this conference, I commit 2022, with the topic, Advancing the role of material and metallurgical innovation and technology in the digital transformation era to reach a sustainable world and officially open. Thank you very much, Bapak Juan. You are welcome to return back to your seat. What a grand opening to ECOMET 2022. Excellencies, next up, in completing the opening of this fifth international conference, we will play the video teaser. We present to you the video teaser of the 5th International Conference on Materials and Metallurgical Engineering and Technology 2022.
Ladies and gentlemen, due to some audio problems, the showing of the video teaser will be postponed. Next up, there will be some more agenda for today's opening. For our impressive introduction, we hope dearly that everyone will enjoy the two-day course of our event and for the distinguished delegates to get the best results. Because today, and at the end of the day tomorrow, there will be the best presentation and best paper for the winners. So we hope that all distinguished delegates will try their best and get the best results. After this, we are going to go into our main session, the keynote speaker sessions. During the keynote speaker sessions, we will have excellent topics with inspiring speakers to help you get insights and start discussions later in the parallel sessions. Excellencies, now we are going to go to our main session, the keynote speaker session. During the keynote speaker sessions, we will have an excellent moderator to guide and discuss with impressive speakers on the interesting topics ahead. The honorable moderator for today is Dr. Agung Purniawan, STMA, to give you an overview of the excellency. Dr. Agung Purniawan received his bachelor degree at the Department of Mechanical Engineering, ITAS, master's degree in diamond coating technology for cutting tools at UTM Malaysia, and followed by doctorate degree at TU Delft, Netherlands. In terms of his occupation, Dr. Agung Purniawan is one of the excellent lecturers at the Department of Materials and Metallurgical Engineering, ITS, and also currently serving as the head of sub-directorate of research and scientific publications, directorate of research and community service. Other than those two aspects, Dr. Agung Purniawan has a long list of research experience, scientific articles, book creations, until reviewer and assessors of numerous programs, including the LPDP scholarship. With his strong background in coating technology, biomaterial and heat treatment and surface engineering, Dr. Agung Purniawan is the ultimate expert to guide our keynote sessions for today. Without further ado, we humbly invite Dr. Agung Purniawan, STM Inc. to the stage. Please give a warm applause. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning Our honorable keynote speakers Presenters Audience And all of the participants of uh, ECOMET 2022 My name is Agung Burniawan And I will be moderator For this keynote speaker session The first keynote presentation Today will be presented by Dr. Wahyu Bambang Udiantno with topic 
advancing the rule of materials and methodological innovation and technology in the digital transformation era to reach a sustainable world. Before this season begins, let me first read the curriculum vitae of Dr. Bambang why you bambang with the Now, okay, um, Dr. Bambang, uh, why you bambang with the no? uh, has background research in porous material and material analysis, and his uh, education background, uh, bachelor science. Department of Physik University of Indonesia and Master of Science, Material Science Program, University of Indonesia and then continue his uh, Doctor of Engineering in Safety Science Engineering from Hirosaki University, Japan. Dr. Wanyu now is Head of Research Center for Advanced Materials National Research and Innovation Agency of Indonesia, Bin Puspitek Serpong, Tangerang Selatan. And also, he has a working experience as Research Center of Physics Indonesian Institute, uh, Sciences Puspitek Serpong, Tangerang Selatan. Now, uh, he has a lot of uh, research project related to analysis of coating material in circulating 3D site bed boiler tube and also uh, developing a continuous steam sulfur production route for local industries development of thin powder based on gas atomization method for raw material of solder based products And uh, he has also has award from uh, SCEG tournament meeting 2014 Niigata, Japan, recognized poster presentation, and also excellent paper award in the second ASEAN conference of Biomes uh, Science. Sukuba Jepang, best poster presentation, 47th SGEG fall meeting, Sapporo, Japan, and Hirosaki University best student award, Hirosaki University in 2016, and he has lots uh, publication and is uh, 20 yeah more than 20 selected paper in this uh, curriculum fitting. Okay, uh, now I would like to invite Mr. Wahyu to join in the stage and start this session. Did you hear Mr. Wahyu? Please come to the stage. Institut Teknologi uh, 10 November Bapak Profesor Dr. Insinyur Muhammad Asari MM IPU ASEAN M uh, which is uh, today uh, uh, represent by uh, Bapak Dr. Juari Vice Dean of Faculty of Industrial Technology and System Engineering Honorable Head of uh, Department of Materials Engineering, uh, the Department of Metallurgy, Ecal and Materials Engineering of Institute Technology, 10 November, Bapak Sigit Triwicaksono, PhD, uh, Bapak 
Sutarsis, PhD, uh, Chairman of uh, ECOMET 2022, distinguished uh, keynote speakers uh, from Japan, Malaysia, and Netherlands, as well as from uh, Indonesia. Uh, our respected speakers uh, and all colleges, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, happy Saturday. It's uh, I think today is a very very good day. Uh, good morning and blessed to all of us. It is a great honor to me uh, representing our head of National Research and Innovation Agency, Bapak Dr. Uh, Laksana Trihandoko, to attend uh, the great equip occasion of the fifth uh, International Conference on Materials and Metallurgical Engineering and Technology and meet many experts in metallurgy and materials science field. First of all, I want to convey our head uh, apology for cannot attending this conference, since in the same time we also have a big agenda in Chibinon, which is Indonesia Research and Innovation Expo, INARI, from, uh, to 27, uh, from October 27 to uh, 13 uh, October. So uh, I am standing here to represent him uh, as a representative of uh, National Research and Innovation Agency, BRIN. My name is Wani Bambang Widayatno from uh, Research Center for uh, Advanced Material, BRIN. And in this happy moment, uh, I hope we can share uh, our views and learn novel findings as well as uh, creating and strengthening our collaboration within uh, each other. The topic of this conference is advancing the role of uh, materials and metallurgical innovation and technology in the digital transformation era to reach a sustainable world. Yeah, this uh, theme is uh, very, very uh, difficult topic. Yeah, uh, but it is important topic, especially for Indonesians, since uh, we have uh, many things to be fixed after uh, recovering from uh, pandemic situations. Uh, now, if we speaking, uh, if we speak uh, of uh, digital transformations and the role, uh, next slide, please. So, if we uh, if uh, speaking of digital transformations and the role of material and metallurgi metallurgical innovation, we have to mention some of the greatest uh, invention and innovation uh, and transformation in the human history. Uh, you can see here from the slide from, from the old days of our ancestors, we already uh, have uh, fire technology. Uh, maybe some for some uh, people, uh, this uh, fire technology is uh, trivial and maybe uh, unnoticed. But uh, this uh, technology is very important, not only in the past, but also in the future. Yeah, and, and maybe, uh, but uh, also for the rest of uh, human uh, civilization. Of course, we can imagine uh, our life without uh, fire. Yeah, we cannot. Uh, we can. We cannot uh, cook, and, and also for maybe for our metallurgical and uh, material scientists, they cannot uh, do some heat treatment or so on and so on. So, fire technology is uh, very very important uh, in our uh, human civilization. We also have the technology of language, uh, by which we can easily communicate with each other and convey our message and requirements and indeed language has become uh, the symbol of civilization from the old times in fact we have greatest uh, technology innovations such as uh, trading farming uh, also paper steel electricity engine and so on which we cannot leisurely live without on and beside of the greatest innovation i have shown in this slide we have also so many other innovations which might be uh, unnoticed until now, yet has already transformed the shape of human civilization until these days. Next slide, please. Okay, this, uh, this transformation has, has already brought us to the advance of our community life, to how improve to how we can improve uh, the quality of public property here, you can see. And then uh, how uh, we can communicate and carry out our work to be done 
and some innovations come from uh, further development of previous technologies, while some other arise as a result of technologic, technological combination from different fields. We have seen the tremendous development. Next slide, please. We have seen the tremendous development of biotechnology, which enable us to produce diverse pharmaceuticals, diagnostic methods, as well as complex medical tools to solve uh, new medical problems in the last century. We are also witnessing how nanotechnology changed our perspective on matters and materials, revolutionize the material properties, which then bring the revolution to the information technology, the revolution of how we store the data, how to maintain uh, the data security, and so on. And again, the combination of these three revolutions has brought the technological advancement to the next step, and I am very sure it will bring uh, the technological ad uh, advancement to further step in the, near, in the near future. Of course, uh, we should not neglect the contribution of metallurgy and material evolution. Next slide, please. Okay, we can see here uh, from the old times of our ancestor, they uh, already applied a simple technology to utilize natural polymers and elastomers, such as woods, skin, fibers, and so on, as well as other class of materials for, simply, for simple daily needs. As their needs increase, we can see they learned that some materials are suitable for certain application, while others not. They tried to figure out the possibility of getting the derivatives of the materials and obtain better product. We then recognize, recognize it as a heat treatment, for example, a loying method, and so on, which focuses on manipulating the materials to get the desired properties. Through long experimentation, we can now obtain the materials with higher degree of complexity, such as uh, super alloy in the middle of the figure, we can see here, uh, and also synthetic diamond, next slide please. Uh, we can see here from the figure, uh, we can uh, now obtain the materials with higher degree of complexity, uh, for example, super alloy and synthetic diamonds, also, Uh, many many uh, other material amorphous metal uh, and then uh, conductive polymers and so on uh, which which uh, have been used and will be further developed uh, to fill our hunger of uh, technological advancement and this technology technological advancement uh, have already been used uh, for many many applications for example for aviation for agriculture electronics medical and military purpose as well as our recent needs on renewable energy. And fortunately, we might do not need to rely on long experimentation to reach uh, further advancements since we can now utilize the power of database and artificial intelligence. Nowadays, many researchers have already used a simulation approach to predict the material properties and to discover the new desired materials. Using the principle of collect and share, in the next slide, please. Here we, uh, there is uh, some new perspective uh, in, the, in this uh, new era. Uh, for example, if we see the, the traditional approach in the first, third, second, and the third paradigms of the uh, third uh, uh, industrial revolution, we can uh, exploit the digital transformation by using uh, the previous data collected and then transform our way from traditional approach into data database driven approach. Herein, the process can be iterated and 
optimize for any certain circumstances we might want. The properties and performance of the resulted new materials can be recollected to enrich the database and strengthen the machine learning process in the next slide. Here we can see the looping of the uh, materials development cycle and uh, the cycle can be uh, iterated many many more uh, to get uh, the properties of the desired material. In addition, we can also conduct uh, prototyping in the next slide. Uh, also uh, validation, testing, and we can also uh, do the evaluation of a material lifetime to ensure the material performance before entering the manufacturing step. And by using this approach, we can now offer lower possibilities of manufacturing failure and contribute on strengthening domestic manufacturing sector. This is very important since manufacturing sector has considerably significant contribution to Indonesia's GDP, gross, uh, gross, uh, development, uh, gross domestic product. In the next slide, we can see the next slide, we can see uh, the, in the left table uh, we can see the contribution of manufacturing sector to Indonesian uh, economy in 2017. It's not data, but uh, I think it is uh, still relevant, relevant uh, for our condition today. Uh, in 2017, uh, the manufacturing sector absorbed about 25 million workers and gained about uh, 200 billion uh, US dollar as an output. Uh, which is around 20% uh, 20, uh, 20 of uh, Indonesia's uh, GDP. The challenge now is how to, ma to maintain and to elevate this number in the competition era of Industry 4.0. We have 10 prioritized activities to carry out, which some of them can be conducted in universities and research institutes. First, how we can bring our knowledge to enhance domestic raw material processing in order to increase the market value of domestic product. We also need to empower our small and medium enterprises with new technologies so that their competitiveness in global market increase. This can be done by improving the human resources especially in research and development and strengthening collaboration among universities, research institute, and also private sector to establish the innovation ecosystem in Indonesia. It is our mutual concern to develop these five technologies in the uh, bottom side this uh, five technologies, I think this is uh, very important uh, to face the era of uh, industry 4.0 in Indonesia so that we can uh, give a significant contribution uh, including uh, the advanced production method uh, for us, uh, metallurgists and uh, material scientists and support the industry uh, 4.0 roadmap. And considering that, uh, in the next slide, the Indonesian president had decreed the integration of four R&D institutes and ministry of science and technology to accumulate critical mass in research, development, assessment, application, as well as integrated inventions and innovation, which we call it now as BRIN. In this conference, I would like to introduce BRIN, especially our research organization of nanotechnology and materials. It is uh, one division uh, in BRIN which uh, focuses on previously stated issues. In the next slide, we can see that BRIN has two parts uh, of structure, which is uh, seven deputies uh, in the left side, which I uh, mark with a red dash. 
This step, the uh, seven deputies uh, provide support on creating research and innovation ecosystem in Indonesia. And we also have uh, another uh, structure, which is uh, 12 research organizations which conduct research activities. Here I mark uh, the, with the uh, red, uh, red uh, rectangle uh, our research organization, which is a research organization of nanotechnology and material, which is uh, our home base is situated in uh, Puspitek, Tangerang Selatan, and we are uh, welcoming you to visit us uh, in this, uh, the suburban city near Jakarta in the next slide. Uh, here, here, uh, it's uh, maybe around uh, one or maybe one and a half hour from Jakarta to our uh, home base in Puspitek. Uh, and maybe in the next slide, yeah, here is the the environment, yes, the, the condition in the uh, Puspitek area. Uh, and I hope uh, the participant here, our uh, distinguished uh, professor, our uh, distinguished uh, keynote speakers can also uh, visit uh, us and uh, discuss uh, with us uh, for the further uh, collaboration. The next slide. And in this uh, area, in Puspitek area, we have uh, seven of uh, ten fields of national technology prior priority uh, from uh, food and agriculture, uh, energy, uh, health, transportation, engineering, uh, until maritime, maritime. Uh, except for uh, social humanities, education, and art, which is uh, not uh, situated in uh, our uh, campus in uh, Puspitek. Next. Uh, in our research organization for nanotechnology and materials, we have a seven research center, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, chaired chair, uh, chair by uh, Professor Dr. Ratna Muriadi. We have a uh, seven research center, which is a uh, research center for mining technology, research center for metallurgy, research center for advanced materials, chemistry, polymer technology, quantum physics, and uh, research center for uh, photonics. So we are very welcome, uh, all of uh, the participants here, all of the speaker, all of the distinguished uh, professor uh, to come uh, visit us and have uh, some uh, discussion and also we also would like to uh, have some discussion in this uh, conference and to uh, creating and uh, strengthening our uh, collaboration. Next, uh, this is a research center for uh, mining technology. There are uh, four uh, research groups, which is a uh, research group of uh, mining exploration and then environmentally uh, friendly mining and then uh, the Research group of increase in value added and techno-economic minerals, as well as the research group of mining impact management. This uh, research center have uh, many many campus, not also not only in uh, Puspitek in uh, uh, Tangerang Selatan, but also in uh, Bandung, in Bogor, in uh, Lampung, and also in Yogyakarta. So this uh, research center is maybe. Uh, uh, the the most uh, with uh, the research center with uh, most place uh, to 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 come uh, and to visit. And then next, the next is a research center uh, for metallurgy. There are many uh, four uh, research group, which is uh, research group of special steel and alloys, uh, corrosion and mitigation technology, uh, extract extraction metallurgy, and non for non ferrous alloy and metal matrix composites. We also have uh, in the next slide a research center for uh, advanced material, which has uh, which has uh, 14 uh, research group from battery, uh, high technology rubber, bioceramics, colloid nanoscience, creative uh, functional ceramics, and so on until uh, surface and coating technology. We also have uh, in the next slide research center for. Uh, Ah, maybe uh, be, 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 uh, before I proceed to uh, to the next uh, research center, uh, this is uh, our uh, my mission to uh, to introduce more about uh, our research center. This is our home base. Uh, we have uh, two building in uh, Puspitek area, building uh, two to four and building uh, four four zero and four four one. 
uh, because uh, our uh, research center uh, is uh, integrated uh, from uh, X uh, BPPT, X uh, Batan, X DP. So uh, we have uh, uh, two uh, buildings uh, which uh, uh, can be used uh, for uh, research uh, activities uh, of our staff. Next, uh, this is our scopes. Uh, maybe in in Indonesia we can call it uh, Palugada. Palu mau gua ada ya in Indonesia. So uh, uh, we have uh, various uh, scopes here uh, from uh, functional material and smart composites, also material for energy conversion and storage, surface and coating technology, structural and industrial uh, material, magnetic and speedtronic material. Superconducting material and as well as uh, biocompatible material. Next, uh, this is uh, the research center for uh, chemistry. In this uh, research center, we have uh, about uh, seven uh, research group from surface chemistry and nanoparticles, biochemistry, analytical, analytical chemistry, and uh, until uh, chemical process engineering. This is also situated in Puspitek uh, area in Serpong, Tangerang Selatan. The next slide. Okay, this is a research center for uh, polymer technology. They have uh, four uh, research group, which is uh, polymer composite, functional polymer, polymer synthesis and modification, as well as green and sustainable polymer. Next. Okay. Uh, beside of the uh, experimenting uh, research center, we also have. Uh, research center which focuses on uh, simulation, uh, material modeling, and so on. Uh, uh, we have a research center for quantum physics. Uh, they have uh, four, uh, four, sorry, five uh, research groups, uh, which is uh, which are high, high energy theory physics, uh, nuclear and particle physics, uh, quantum matter theory, nanomaterial design and simulation, and uh, there is also one uh, research uh, group uh, about uh, quantum device and technologies with. Uh, which uh, begin to uh, to do uh, experimentation in uh, in uh, the laboratory, uh, not only uh, simulation and material modeling. The next, uh, we also uh, have a research center for photonics. There are three research groups: uh, optoelectronic based control and measurement system, optical detection system, and also process lasers and uh, spectroscopy. So. Uh, the main thing in this uh, research center is we have uh, maybe I can say maybe uh, the best uh, laser uh, laser processing facility maybe in Indonesia because uh, to our knowledge uh, we still cannot uh, find uh, another institute with uh, uh, complete uh, laser facilities uh, for material processing uh, except in this uh, research center. Next, so uh, our uh, focus in Brin, we have uh, some scheme which uh, we we believe and we uh, we uh, we need to uh, to uh, to share to uh, to other to other uh, colleagues here. Uh, the the first scheme is uh, open research infrastructure because uh, we. Uh, we believe uh, the utilization of uh, our facilities of our uh, research uh, equipment uh, is still low. So we uh, invite uh, many many researchers, not also, not only in uh, Indonesia but also from uh, other countries, to come to our uh, uh, institute uh, and to uh, use and to increase the utilization of our uh, facilities in uh, Brin. Uh, maybe for uh, for some information, in the end of uh, this year, uh, we I'm sorry, uh, last last two week last two week uh, we the the new uh, the new facilities of uh, high resolution uh, transmission electron microscopy uh, already uh, come to our institute, and in the end of the this year, we will also uh, have. Uh, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy (XPS), and I think this uh, this uh, facility maybe is uh, the third one, the third because uh, uh, previously we all, we 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 already have uh, XPS in ASEAN, in Malaysia, and also in Singapore. So uh, this facility is 
maybe the, the third in uh, ASEAN countries. So uh, this uh, this game open research infrastructure is uh, open for all uh, college from industries, uh, from academics also, and uh, I have to highlight this one. This is free of charge for collaborators because yeah, <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> this is I think this uh, good offer for <laughs> for the collaborators because. Uh, uh, in Brin, we uh, uh, every uh, research staff they have uh, something like a uh, uh, voucher, voucher, uh, voucher, uh, uh, voucher amount, uh, voucher amount. Uh, maybe like 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 you you, you have some uh, some some number in in your uh, uh, smartphone uh, to, uh, to 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 communicate to uh, to buy some uh, uh, data package uh, for and so on. And this uh, this uh, this voucher uh, can be used uh, for uh, using the all uh, the facilities in entire green, for example. So uh, also we also have uh, another scheme which uh, in in, uh, in the next slide, please. Okay, this is also uh, another scheme. Uh, uh, which is uh, intended uh, to facilitate the researcher mobility in uh, in our uh, institute. Uh, so we we welcome uh, the student uh, to do a MBKM uh, scheme in our institute, and also to get a good engagement uh, from the early years from MBKM. And then uh, I we hope uh, it it is uh, continued uh, with uh, the final uh, final project. And then uh, continue to uh, uh, master degree uh, thesis and continue to uh, PhD. And also we have uh, the following uh, scheme of uh, postdoctoral. So we invite uh, postdoctoral not only uh, from Indonesia but also from uh, outside countries uh, to come to our uh, institute and uh, because uh, we. Uh, uh, we realize we have to. Uh, we still have uh, many, many, uh, many, many. Uh, uh, how to say? Uh, many, many things to uh, to improve. Yeah, our our uh, the, the the competence, the competency of uh, our staff, the uh, research ecosystem, research uh, uh, environment. So uh, we would like to uh, to welcome uh, postdoctoral uh, from uh, any institute. To come to Brin, of course, uh, there is uh, some allowance here, <laughs> uh, and also we have uh, the scheme of uh, visiting researchers. So, uh, for postdoctoral researchers, it is uh, it is uh, uh, limited on uh, only for uh, those uh, uh, which already uh, graduate from a, a doctoral course. Uh, uh, Five, five years after 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 uh, their graduation, but uh, for uh, for the longer uh, than uh, five years, we also have another scheme which is a visiting researcher or visiting professor. On and this scheme also uh, have some uh, some grading. Okay, there is uh, some notification from the <laughs> from the committee. <laughs> okay, I will uh, try to uh, speed the presentation. And also we. Uh, 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 in conclusion, we, 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 we are welcoming uh, many many uh, uh, researcher from uh, universities, from uh, other research institute uh, in Indonesia and also in, uh, in outside country uh, to strengthening our uh, environment of uh, research, our uh, research uh, ecosystem, and so on. And then the next, the next slide is uh, we also have uh, the third scheme is uh, research and innovation facilitation. Uh, in the uh, bottom uh, right bottom here, we, you can see uh, uh, some scheme of uh, advanced Indonesia research grant. grant. And this uh, scheme is open not only for uh, Brin uh, staff, but also in uh, many many staff uh, researcher staff in uh, in Indonesia. Uh, I still uh, don't know. Uh, is it open for 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 researcher uh, from outside of uh, country? I don't know, <laughs> but uh, and, uh, at least until now, uh, this uh, this scheme is uh, open for uh, uh, all of the researcher in Indonesia. We also have uh, the grant uh, for uh, COVID nineteen research. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, even though uh, now uh, 
the, the, the pandemic situation is already recovered. <laughs> Uh, and also we have uh, the scheme of uh, research collaboration center and this uh, scheme uh, can only uh, how to say can only be applied uh, by uh, universities cannot be applied by uh, green staff so uh, uh, the, the, this, this scheme is intended to uh, to uh, to strengthen the collaboration between green staff and also uh, universities in, in Indonesia and also we have uh, the scheme for uh, selling this grant uh, for example for sampling uh, some uh, some sample in the in the remote area in the uh, in the ocean or so on also we have uh, the scheme for innovation products uh, trial grant in health uh, application also we have uh, the scheme for innovation products testing grant in agriculture uh, and also scheme scheme for uh, startup uh, Okay, two minutes left. <laughs> uh, and also local acquisition knowledge and uh, so on. Okay, next. Okay, thank you uh, for uh, the opportunity to uh, introduce our institute and I hope we can uh, share and discuss uh, further and we can uh, start to collaborate uh, uh, in maybe in the, in, the, uh, in the next session. Thank you uh, very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. presentation and also a lot of information during presentation Dr. Wahyu. Uh, now we come to a uh, question and answer session. If you have any question, please raise your hand and uh, introduce yourself. Okay, any question? Okay, yeah. Thank you very much for nice presentation, Pak Wahyu. I'd like to ask two questions. The first question is, uh, as your presentation, uh, that no charge, yeah, free of charge for the collaborator to use the facility in print. Yeah. But uh, is there any special or specific requirement for the collaborator uh, so they can access uh, with no charge. The second question is, what is the special program or for the print? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Pak uh, Sigit. So there are two questions uh, from Pak Sigit about uh, charge, yeah, free of charge of uh, doing using facility print and special program for. This. Okay. This. okay uh, thank you for the question uh, about special requirement I think there is no special requirement for collaborators for so uh, as long as uh, the, uh, the collaborator from universities already uh, engage with uh, our lead staff and then uh, they have uh, some maybe some gentleman agreement maybe I think uh, for example uh, to, uh, to, to conduct the research and to publish uh, uh, to do uh, some publication, uh, uh, so uh, I think uh, if uh, if uh, it is uh, required, so uh, they can uh, use uh, our facilities because uh, our staff uh, in Brin, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, have some uh, some voucher. For example, uh, maybe I can uh, I can uh, explain in my case. <laughs> for example, for me, uh, in my case, I have a voucher about. Uh, one 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 uh, one hundred million one hundred million uh, rupees and uh, this can be used for example for uh, for uh, for using uh, SRD uh, the, the price for example maybe around uh, five hundred thousand rupees so uh, after after uh, if, if uh, it is uh, required so you uh, you can uh, uh, send the sample to us and then uh, we uh, we can uh, uh, apply for uh, for characterization and the, the, the amount will will be uh, deducted from uh, from our uh, voucher and after that 
we, we, we can use uh, this, this data to, uh, uh, to make some publication and after that, uh, the publication can be used for me, uh, for example, as a print staff uh, to, uh, to do a top up, top up of uh, our future, for example, uh, for a publication uh, maybe around uh, 5 million rupiahs, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> 5 million rupiahs. So, uh, and that voucher is uh, not only granted uh, to, to one person, but uh, it, it is uh, granted for all of the person in the in the publication. For example, if the in the publication we have uh, maybe uh, ten authors, so each author uh, can get uh, five million rupees. So uh, uh, this is uh, our strategy to uh, to strengthen the collaboration within uh, our uh, green staff and also uh, with uh, other staff uh, with other uh, uh, researcher in uh, uh, outside the uh, institute uh, like that. So. Uh, maybe uh, in uh, for uh, for researcher in universities, you you also have to maybe uh, how to say uh, maybe selective. <laughs> so uh, for example, you you can choose for example the 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 uh, the green staff, the researcher with uh, for maybe uh, for uh, with a higher uh, voucher amount. <laughs> so you can you can you can use the facilities uh, uh, freely. You can uh, use uh, the. Uh, the access of this uh, facility uh, easily like that. Uh, so, and also, uh, it, uh, the publication, the, the, the output can be claimed in, in, uh, in both parties, uh, in Brian also, in, also in university. So, I, I think uh, there is no special uh, requirement as long as uh, there is some maybe gentleman agreement. Of course, uh, uh, beside of the uh, uh, official agreement of, uh, uh, of uh, both uh, parties. Uh, also, we have a gentleman agreement because uh, you know uh, how to say uh, many, 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 uh, many, many cases. Uh, uh, for example, in in, in one party uh, is uh, I, I should I should be the, 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 the main author. I should be like I thought. Uh, I think the, the gentleman agreement is uh, very very important in this case. And also uh, for a special special program. special program. I think uh, up to now we we only have uh, this uh, program in a uh, scheme of uh, scheme uh, third third scheme uh, research and innovation facilitation. I think uh, this this uh, uh, the, the special program in, in green stuff. But uh, I don't know. Maybe in the next uh, year, maybe um, maybe maybe there is uh, maybe there are another program. There is another program, but uh, I I cannot sure because. Uh, this is uh, the, the the presentation I get from uh, from the second deputies of uh, Brin. Okay. So uh, I think the special uh, the, the the scheme of uh, the scheme three research and innovation facilitation I think it is already special I think, <laughs> and it can also uh, uh, combine with the scheme in uh, uh, Indicti. So maybe uh, we can share the benefit uh, from uh, our. How to say from our uh, home institute uh, in in Brin, uh, we can we can get the benefit. We can also get the benefit from uh, Dikti, and we can combine it to uh, uh, to make the, the project uh, successful. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Doctor Wahyu. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, terima kasih, uh, Doctor, for the uh, presentation. Uh, very sorry, I joined the uh, uh, session very late, but when I entered the uh, hall, I found that uh, what you presented uh, it is on the materials okay, and minerals. Uh, I'm from University of Science Malaysia. Uh, we have uh, materials and mineral resources department or school. Um, the research that you presented just now, the, um, it is quite related to us. Okay? So we are interested to collaborate more, uh, but I'm not sure is it um, BRIM, uh, what kind of collaboration, uh, international collaboration that BRIM uh, interested. So maybe you can briefly explain about that. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Professor, for the uh, question. Uh, first, we, uh, with University of uh, University Science Malaysia, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we also have uh, we already have uh, some uh, agreement. Uh, for example, uh, 
in, in our in our uh, side, we want to uh, to increase the competency of uh, our staff, and we also have uh, the scheme of uh, degree by research. So, uh, in degree by research scheme, uh, the the staff our our staff uh, can uh, can do the PhD, for example, can do master, and uh, collaborate with uh, the supervisor from the uh, outside uh, universities. And in uh, with university science master, I think already uh, already uh, some some agreement to, to do a degree by research. So uh, using the uh, the topic of uh, the research topic in uh, in brain, we can do uh, the the uh, co supervising. Uh, the I think maybe the main supervisor is in campus in university, and the co promoter is in uh, brain. So we can uh, uh, do some uh, co supervising. Uh, I think this uh, this is the main uh, the main uh, collaboration I think uh, with uh, the universities uh, outside of Indonesia, and also uh, of course we can also do uh, research collaboration in the content of research between uh, two uh, or more uh, researcher. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I think I think we can we can we can do uh, that. Uh, so. Uh, uh, the, the the first is uh, uh, using a degree by research scheme, so we can do a uh, uh, course supervising, and also uh, we can do uh, some uh, research collaborations. And uh, if uh, you are uh, if you are interested, I can uh, share and discuss with you maybe in, in the uh, after after this session is ended. Thank you. Okay. Uh. I think it's uh, time is over, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wahyu, for very nice presentation. Uh, before we close, uh, you have uh, some uh, statement for closing statement. Okay, uh, thank you. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, we are now in the stage of uh, how to say, collecting many many friends. <laughs> From many many uh, institutes, from many many universities, so uh, our head uh, of uh, National Research and Innovation Agency already, uh, how to say, give a submission uh, to us. Uh, everywhere we everywhere we go, everywhere we, we, we come to uh, to to another uh, institute, to another uh, universities, please uh, how to say, introduce our uh, our institute and how to say promote. <laughs> Promote, uh, do do promotion. So uh, I do uh, very very uh, welcome uh, for uh, collaboration, uh, not only uh, in uh, in the field of uh, our uh, organizational research, but also maybe in uh, in another field. And so if we uh, if uh, if you have some uh, uh, interest, uh, I can uh, give you. I can share you maybe uh, the, the number of the head of uh, another research center and also. Uh, you can uh, communicate uh, directly, or you can also communicate uh, uh, to me. Okay, thank you, Dr. Rayu. Uh, finally, we came to come to uh, the end of the first keynote speaker presentation. Uh, one again, thank you very much for your nice presentation. Big applause to Dr. Rayu. Okay, um, now we go, we move to uh, second presenter in keynote, in keynote speaker session. The second keynote speaker today will be presented by uh, Dr. Tetsuya Kida, which topic graphene oxide, two-dimensional carbon nanomaterials for electrochemical application and biomass conversion. Before the session begin, let me first read the curriculum vitae from uh, Prof. Tetsuwa Kida. Again, um, name as uh, Professor Dr. Tetsuo Kida from Department of uh, Applied Chemistry and uh, Bio Biochemistry from Kumamoto University, Japan. 
education background uh, from uh, bachelor engineering, master engineering, until PhD from uh, Kyushu University. Yeah. And uh, field of the research, a interest in synthesis of inorganic nanomaterial, such as quantum dots, oxide nanostructures, and graphene oxide, and their application for uh, biomass conversion, gas sensing, gas separation, solar energy convection. Uh, from biography, uh, uh, our keynote speaker today, uh, he pursued Dr. Fellow in National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, IEST, Japan, from 2001 until 2003, and uh, he uh, was assistant professor in Department of Chemistry and Applied Chemistry, Saka University, and also he uh, associate professor in Department of Energy and Material Sciences, Kyushu University, during 2003 until 2013, and uh, he also. Uh, Fishing Scholar, Material Science Division, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, USA, and uh, he is professor uh, in Division of Material Science Faculty and Advanced Science and Technology, Kumamoto University, Japan, from 2013, right now. And uh, also he has, uh, he was uh, visiting professor in Institute for Chemical Investigation of Catalonia, ICIQ, Institute Catala Investigación Quimica, Spain. And um, there are lots of uh, publications yeah, related to uh, his expertise. Uh, yeah. In this uh, CV, there are uh, 25 publications. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, now, uh, I would like to uh, invite Prof. Tetsuka to give a presentation. Yeah. Time is yours. Salamat <laughs> pagi. Yeah, good morning and thank you very much for kind introduction. Yeah, so I'm Tetsuya Kida. So it's it's the great honor for me to give a talk here in ITS. So yeah, before COVID uh, nineteen pandemic, so I was here in ITS. So I feel very happy to be back in ITS. And, uh, and also thank the organizing committee to give me great chance to have a plenary talk here. Thank you very much. So my talk today is uh, about graphene oxide because you are mainly from the uh, Department of Material Science and uh, Metallurgy. So I hope my talk, my topic, uh, interested to you. Yeah. So, um, all right. So the title of my talk is uh, okay. <laughs> it doesn't work. Okay. The graphene oxide. It is a two-dimensional nanoscale materials have a lot of applications. So I'm gonna um, show you my recent application of this uh, two-dimensional nanomaterials. So before that, I would like to uh, introduce uh, myself. So, so I come from Kumamoto University. So Kumamoto is uh, one of the prefecture of Japan, and uh, it is located in Kyushu Island. So Kumamoto is a, uh, the center, located at the center of <laughs> center of the uh, islands. So we have many volcano because we are close to the uh, center of the island. So we have many uh, hot springs because of active volcanoes. 
And then this is the uh, overlook of uh, Kumamoto City. So the size of moderate, not so big, but uh, not so small. The population is about 700,000. Yeah. And um, yeah. And this is uh, our symbol, Kumamoto Castle. So when you beat Kumamoto, so you can enjoy our old castle. All right, the outline of my talk. So uh, I'm going to first talk about why is graphene oxide, briefly. And then we show you uh, our, uh, the application of the, uh, these the, the listed here, like uh, water vapor electrolysis to produce hydrogen. Um, the hydrogen separation for purification of hydrogen and then deuterium synthesis from hydrogen using graphene oxide and the hydrogen capture by GO. And the finally, I'm going to talk about the biomass conversion with VO. So as you see, a lot of uh, applications. And the graphene oxide is the uh, carbon materials um, produced by the exfoliation and the oxidation of uh, graphite. So graphite is available. And, uh, but this uh, the material has two-dimensional um, morphology, as shown in this uh, TM images. And um, because of this uh, structure, they have, they show unique properties. And then another uh, advantage is you can easily get it okay, as compared to graphene. And then this is uh, chemically easy to produce. And uh, I mainly focusing on uh, electrochemical properties of these materials. And because of this unique nanosheet structure, the, the, in ideally, uh, you can produce out of small devices using these materials. And then, then indeed, now there have been many uh, applications and already uh, published by others. OK, this is a model uh, structure of graphene oxide. So they have mainly uh, carbon bonds, sp2 and uh, sp3. And uh, the, 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 the different point of graphene is the graphene oxide have the oxygen function groups. The oxygen uh, attached on the surface uh, as, a, the, the, as a chemical species like uh, epoxide, hydroxy groups, carbon group, and carboxy groups. Because of the, these uh, function groups, they show uh, proton conductivity. So mainly, um, mainly epoxide um, known to show the proton conductivity. But the uh, carboxy uh, group also contribute uh, proton conduction. So if you have uh, proton conductivity in some materials, you can easily produce the fuel cell or uh, other electrochemical devices. And then uh, originally, this phenomena has been reported by Kumamoto University Group. This is the first uh, report from uh, Kumamoto University. So this is uh, uh, how to make uh, graphene oxide-based self-standing membranes. For applications, so you have to assemble nanosheets into something. So we are focusing on membrane. Uh, we start from uh, graphite powder, and then the, by oxidation and the exfoliation, you have nanosheets. And then we have uh, dispersion in water, and as you see this uh, AFM images, the uh, nanosheets has a height of 1.2 nanometers. And um, by uh, vacuum filtration, we have the membrane on filter paper. And uh, we remove the membrane from the filter paper. We have 
the, this kind of two-dimensional stacking nanosheet membrane. So the first example I, I show you is the, uh, the electrochemical hydrogen separation. This is a pumping, very easy and uh, simple method. So we have a uh, geomembrane, and then we have electrode, and then we apply voltage on both sides. And the one side, we introduce hydrogen, and then the hydrogen feed side, uh, the uh, positive potential applied. So hydrogen oxidation reaction happens. So as a result, we have electron and uh, mobile proton. Then at the other side, uh, it is negatively charged by outside electrical source, and then we have hydrogen by this uh, proton reduction reaction. And so that means the hydrogen can go through the feed side to the permeate side by the aid of electricity. So you can purify hydrogen in theory. So this is a, a representative uh, result. So as a function of hydrogen permeation flux, as a, uh, as a function of a current density, so you apply the more voltage, and then you have more uh, flow of current, you have more hydrogen permeation. And we next uh, try to uh, produce hydrogen from water. Your water has proton. So water can be, uh, in theory, is a source of hydrogen. So in this case, we introduced hydrogen, uh, water, just, just water vapor, not hydrogen. And then applied uh, positive voltage at the water site. And then we pumped the proton to the other side, and we got hydrogen. So this is, uh, uh, this side is uh, typical the result. So as you see, the hydrogen and the oxygen produced in a one and a two ratio, two and the one ratio. And then this the permeation flux is dependent on uh, current density. So this is a clear indication that we have uh, hydrogen and the oxygen from water with the aid of uh, electricity. Okay, and then uh, this is a uh, example of uh, hydrogen detection this time. So the, before that, we checked the, the applicability of hydrogen separation and the hydrogen production, and then we move on to the hydrogen detection using graphene oxide. So we have graphene oxide uh, membrane, and then at the other side, we have a constant partial pressure of hydrogen, and the other side, we have different partial pressure hydrogen, and we check the electromotive force between the electrode to check the, the let's say, a proton transport number of this membrane. So according to uh, Nan's equation, uh, if we have uh, proton conductivity, EMF it is dependent on the logarithm of partial pressure difference at the both sides. And um, so in this case, the, this the simple equilibrium reaction should happen. And we measure the EMF. So the, this EMF is linear to the hydrogen partial pressure of a logarithm of hydrogen partial pressure, as I shown uh, left hand side uh, figures, okay? And then the, uh, the EMF, the respondent to a change in hydrogen partial pressure, hydrogen concentration. So this means this uh, type of device can be used for hydrogen detection, okay? And then uh, please take a look at this uh, T. T is the uh, proton transport number. So if proton transport number is uh, unity, that means one, this is a clear indication that geo is pure 
dot and contact. They actually, from this uh, slope, we calculate transport number. It is uh, 0.99. So that means the, uh, our membrane is pure proton contact, so no electrical conductivity. Uh, so uh, now we showed the possibility of the determining hydrogen concentration using geo membranes. And then, but the previous case, we have to use uh, pure hydrogen as a reference gas, but this is not uh, practical. So we modify the structure of the uh, sensor. This is a simple sensor. We have geo membrane. We have electrode at the uh, working site and the reference sites. And then we change the material. And then what happened? The one side of the uh, electrode, we have hydrogen uh, anodic uh, the reaction, and then oxygen reduction um, reaction happens simultaneous at the, the special <laughs> electrode. But the, the, uh, the perovskite the electrode as a reference site, the oxygen and the water equivalent reaction happens. Then, uh, uh, by measuring the EMF between the electrode, the electric uh, chemical potential, only dependent on hydrogen partial pressures. So you don't have to use uh, the uh, pure hydrogen as a reference gas. This is very simple, so, and as you see, by introducing a different concentration hydrogen, the EMF changes linearly, and then this EMF was uh, linear to the logarithm of hydrogen concentration, as like this. So this uh, simple, uh, this kind of very uh, simple, uh, small sensor can detect hydrogen in there. So this device can be used for uh, leakage of hydrogen. And then another great thing is it can operate it at room temperature. You don't have to uh, the heat it. You don't have to heat it. This is another the advantage of this type of device. But uh, we still have a problem, issue. One issue was the, uh, our proton conductivity was not so good. So we tried to improve the proton conductivity, and we uh, tried to improve by, in, in, uh, the do by doping uh, this the high, by, high by valence number uh, cations. So we found cesium, uh, cesium, 3 plus and 3, 4 plus, uh, is uh, excellent dopant. So uh, by doping, uh, we got uh, very nice proton conductivity, as shown at the uh, left-hand side uh, figure. This is a uh, proton conductivity as a function of temperature, and the uh, same doped graphene oxide show much better proton conductivity. So one reason is the uh, cesium, cesium ion has a uh, oxi oxidation activity. This is a catalyst. And the cesium 4 plus can be, let's say, oxidize, then graphene oxide nanosheet, and then make a hole, or change the uh, oxygen function groups. And then we have more, higher mobility of proton in the membrane. So this is, the, because of this reason, I saw that the, uh, we have the two times higher protein conductivity uh, than uh, nafion at room temperature. And another uh, uh, advantage of doped sample is the, uh, the, the, the input stability. So bare geo uh, is not stable in water. So as you see, when we put our membrane in water, it gradually dissolved in water because they, they just stacked by a bundle valve force, or bundle valve force. So no interaction between nanosheets, each nanosheet. So uh, after 24 days, the 
membrane completely dissolved in water. So this kind of membrane uh, uses for practical applications. But the uh, doped uh, membrane showed a very, uh, very nice uh, stability in water. So this is because, uh, as I mentioned, the geo has many um, oxygen, oxygen function groups, like uh, car carboxy groups. So carboxy groups has uh, attractivity to these uh, high valence cations. I think this is the reason. Yeah, this is the, the another uh, the advantage of using cesium cation in geo membrane. Okay, uh, uh, okay, I move on to the uh, next topic. So ne next topic is the hydrogen separation without electricity. We try to separate hydrogen at room temperature without electrode, without electricity. So we uh, discovered that the uh, graphene oxide can be a uh, mixed conductor. Mixed conductor means it has electrical conductivity and uh, proton conductivity. How to uh, achieve it? It's simple. You just partially remove oxygen function, function groups. And then, then you will have many sp2 bonds. sp2 bonds has many electrons. So we uh, did by simple heat treatment to get mixed conductivity in graphene oxide. So the, and the idea is uh, by partially reducing the graphene oxide, we have sp3 domain region and the sp2 domain region in one nanosheet. So sp3 domain region have total conductivity. But the sp2 region should have electrical conductivity. So two carrier mobile in one nanosheet. And then we, uh, my idea is we have membrane here. We have two conductivity, proton conductivity and the electron conductivity. And then if we have hydrogen at one side and the catalyst, then the surface reaction should happen. It produces proton and the electron. And the two carrier should mobile in dense geomen. And what happened next? Diffusion and the surface reaction, recombination of proton and the electron. And finally, we have to have pure hydrogen from mixed gas. So that's our idea. Uh, but the, uh, the, the challenge was to control the both conductivity. And then, then finally, we uh, discovered the annealing at uh, 110 or uh, 120 degrees Celsius in there produce a uh, mix of conductivity. So we again measure the proton uh, transport number. So initially, the uh, geo has a uh, pure conductivity, but after treatment at uh, 120 degrees Celsius, uh, we have transport number of 0.45. So to achieve it, the, to, to get this value, uh, took about uh, seven years, seven years. But finally, we have a uh, nice mix of conductor. And this is a, a test cell of hydrogen separation. Uh, we simply have a, a hydrogen and the helium at the one side. We used uh, helium as a leakage detector. And then we check the hydrogen permeation at the G other side by GC, TCD method. Then also, we, we, have, we had to introduce water vapor. Because water vapor, uh, water is the also uh, accelerate the proton conduction in geo membrane. So water uh, introduction is necessary. And then we use uh, this kind of grass cell and the fuel cell type cell. 
right? And uh, we use uh, BTC as a catalyst on the both side. So this is a uh, uh, SEM cross-sectional image of our membrane. And um, the, the far left, uh, left hand side image is the, uh, the permeation of hydrogen and the helium as a, as a function of time. The, after the reducing at uh, 110 degrees C, we have the very high hydrogen selectivity. Uh, as compared to hydrogen uh, permeation, almost no uh, helium permeation. But as you see, helium, helium is smaller than hydrogen. But uh, we blocked the helium. That means there's no hole in our membrane. It's dense. It's dense, but only hydrogen can permeate. So I believe the electrochemical the hydrogen permeation should happen in our reduced or partial reduced membrane. And we finally found the 120 degrees Celsius better to get the high hydrogen helium separation factors. But after the heating at the more high temperature, we saw uh, hydrogen and the helium perme permeation. So the appearance of helium permeation means there is a hole, many holes. So uh, heating at the high temperature is not a choice. Now this is a, a comparison of uh, performance of our membrane with other kinds of uh, membranes. So most, uh, most uh, uh, well-known membrane is paraisium-based membrane. The paraisium membrane is great uh, selectivity, but uh, it is cost too much. It's very high uh, cost. But our membrane show a uh, much better uh, separation factor as compared with other membrane. And uh, also, um, we can block the CO2 permeation, as shown So this uh, image. So selective hydrogen separate, separation was realized using a partial reduced graphene oxide. And then we checked the, the effect of humidity on the permeation of hydrogen. So we uh, controlled the, uh, the, uh, the humidity. The humidity is, uh, when humidity is uh, very high, 92%, we have a hydrogen se uh, uh, separation factor, good, and no helium permeation. But the uh, dry conditions, we saw uh, helium uh, permeation. And then we switched the, to the uh, dry condition, to humid condition, the hydrogen permeability uh, recovered. So, so we can block and um, not to block by changing uh, uh, humidity. This is also interesting, I think. Okay, so dependent on the water vapor pressure, the hydrogen permeability changes. So I think this is uh, maybe uh, for some application is uh, possible, but uh, I have right now no idea. And then we check the effect of uh, electrode. As I show you, uh, as I proposed, the uh, first is a hydrogen, the electrochemical reaction. Hydrogen should uh, they separate into uh, proton and the electron. So for this reaction, you have to have electrode or a catalyst, electrode catalyst. So, but the result, uh, a catalyst, as you see, no hydrogen permeation. But uh, after I attach the PTC catalyst, the, we see hydrogen uh, permeation. So that means electrochemical the model uh, should happen in our membrane. And then also, uh, we use the, uh, the deuterium gas in place of 
uh, hydrogen. To check the our mechanism is true or not. And then by changing the, the hydrogen to uh, deuterium, uh, the deuterium uh, permeation rate decreased. But uh, when we use hydrogen, the permeability come back again. So this is a clear isotope effect. So deuterium is heavy, heavier than hydrogen proton. So the 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 heavy uh, heavy the uh, cation should move slowly than proton. So this is the reason we saw the decrease in permeability when we use deuterium. So I think our model is correct. But uh, we want to have uh, more evidence. So we check the deuterium uh, concentration in GO by shims. We have very nice shims in Kumamoto University. It's very expensive, but uh, Kumamoto University people or a collaborator can use this equipment. So the principle is you uh, spot the membrane and then we detect the element coming from the sputtering processes by detector. So if we detect deuterium, so that's a clear uh, evidence. The deuterium, the, uh, let's say, uh, decomposed into D plus and E minus, okay? And this is a result. This is a reference site is depth profile of the membrane. So the zero depth may mean de zero depth, depth means the surface, okay, surface. And then 600 nanometer depth, we saw the H2, 2H, this is D, okay? And then also doped cerium also detected. So deuterium uh, penetrate deep inside the membrane the surface, okay? And this is uh, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the mapping images of uh, uh, the cerium and uh, <laughs> D2, okay, D2. So we, we uh, the D2 homogeneous, homogeneously distributed in deep inside of the membrane, okay? Uh, but uh, the great thing is, uh, for CIMIS measurement, you have to treat sample ultra vacuum conditions. Okay? Under ultra vacuum condition, gas product should be moved from the surface. But uh, we saw the presence of D. That means D ion strongly bind to oxygen function groups. This is a clear thing. So finally, uh, I show you the model of the proton diffusion in our membrane. So we have two regions, sp2 region and sp3 regions. Mm -hmm. And then, so this line corresponds to each sheet. So inside the sheet, we have many function groups, oxygen function groups, and water. water. And then this area is no uh, oxygen functional group area. So this area, the electron pass through the membrane, and the other area, the proton migrate. And then they each, uh, they meet again, and uh, here, and then you can get hydrogen. So this is uh, our model, and uh, the experimentally proved, I think. All right, the next, uh, the uh, application is production of D2, production of D2, from D2 or vapor and hydrogen, okay? The, our the assumption is that shown here. So we have hydrogen, the hydrogen, the split into electron and the proton. And then if we have D2, Proton and the D plus should exchange each other. And then if we, if we have uh, 
much amount of d d d plus inside, we can get d five. Yeah, actually, by uh, uh, mass spectral analysis, the permeated gas contains D2, okay? but no HD or H2. So sample injected to a mass spectral data, the, we, we had a D2 signal at each time. Okay? So the, 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 the idea is, uh, as shown in the previous slide, the module structure shown here. So if we have many OD, D to O, inside, the proton exchange with CAD, and then come out as a D2, right? So the, the heavy water <laughs> is a uh, maybe Many of you know. Many of you know about uh, heavy water. But the, the, this is a stable isotope of hydrogen. It's a uh, cost too much. Cost too much. Usually, the D2 is produced by electrical production, the, like a split D2O into D2 and O2. But you need electricity. But our method, you don't need to use electricity. You just uh, introduce hydrogen and D2O, and then you can get D2. Of course, D2O is also expensive, but uh, much uh, cheaper than D2. Uh, another idea, this is a possibility, just a possibility. So the hydrogen has uh, three isotopes, normal hydrogen and D and T, and T2O uh, sometimes cause a problem. It has a, like a, uh, so, um, like a in Fukushima, in Japan, the big issue is we have accumulated large amount of T2O, okay? It emits the radiation, and, uh, but uh, T2, T2 is a uh, source of uh, nuclear fusion in the future energy source. So the idea is by T2O available from the near the nuclear plant and then mix with hydrogen and then introduce to our membrane, I think uh, you can get T2, okay? But uh, we haven't yet tried it. But the post, it's possible, I think. So we are now uh, looking for a collaborate to these uh, applications. Okay, and then the, the next application is uh, uh, capture of hydrogen from mixed gas. Okay, so we, we simply uh, have this kind of experimental setup. Uh, we have big container, big, and then we have small container, and this is a small container is capped with geomem. And inside of small container, we have hydrogen detecting sheet. So this, the, this detection sheet, originally opaque, uh, not transparent. But the, if this sheet catch hydrogen, the color turn into transparent. So this is a, uh, hydrogen sensor. So we put hydrogen sensor in small uh, container, right? a bio, and this is capped by uh, geomembrane. So the, uh, we check the hydrogen capture occur or not by this simple uh, experimental setup. So this is a video. So we introduce hydrogen this side, and we have small bio, and then we have uh, uh, sheet, sheet sensor, sheet sensor, hydro sensor. So this is a sheet sensor here. So this is a opaque, not transparent. So this is a no uh, sensor area, hydrogen. And uh, okay, video on. So the the color of sheet gradually change into transparent. So that means the inside of this bio, uh the hydrogen concentration 
went up. So this is a simple demonstration, but uh, it shows the another potential of our membrane to capture hydrogen. Okay. Uh, time is still <laughs> almost approaching to the. Uh, okay. All right. I will quickly uh, show the last uh, topics. So finally, I'm gonna show you the uh, uh, our biomass mass conversion uh, project. <laughs> and uh, as I told you, the, our membrane has a nice frozen conductivity. So that means we can use it as a the uh, acid solid acid catalyst. So this is a very well known. Uh, the reference reported by uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology. So they use the uh, carbon with the, uh, uh, the sulfuric acid function group to convert glucose, uh, to, uh, to convert cellulose into uh, uh, sugars. Okay, uh, reported by In Nature, 2005. So we try to use our GO for biomass conversion as an acid, uh, solid acid catalyst. So we focus on the trans esterification on the, on and the esterification of fatty acid to produce uh, biodiesel fuel. Okay, and then and also we use the microwave as an external uh, energy source. And then um, actually the content of GO is uh, very good, 3.595 compar comparable to the well-known acid catalyst of uh, Ambice 15. And then we got a nice uh, the conversion yield of biodiesel fuel uh, by GO. And this is a good example. And then we try to decompose the cellulose into glucose by our uh, solid acid catalyst. And then we also use the microwave as an external uh, the accelerator. And then we have uh, a nice yield of uh, glucose from cellulose. Okay? Cellulose is very difficult to uh, uh, hydrolysis, but our uh, catalyst works for of uh, these applications. Okay, so that's all of my uh, applications of GEO membrane results. So finally, uh, I'm going to skip. Okay, <laughs> so finally, I would like to uh, show the acknowledgement to our group members to achieve these uh, results. And I also thank the Indonesian students in my group. Raina and the previous member, they contribute a lot to advancing my research. And uh, we now have seven students coming from Indonesia. So I would like to deepen this relationship, Ramoto and the ITS. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Prof. <laughs> That's true. For a uh, nice topic, nice presentation, and also introducing for uh, uh, Kumamoto City. <laughs> Hope uh, someday we will be there after we discuss. Okay, um, now we come to a uh, question and answer session. Uh, please, if you have uh, any question, ask, uh, raise your hand. And don't forget to. Uh, Explain your name. Any question? Uh, thank you, uh, Professor uh, Tetsuya Kida, for this presentation. Uh, I interested uh, 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 previously you you present about uh, the material with uh, proton conductor and electron conductor in the same material. Uh, I I just curious. Uh, is there any uh, any uh, phenomena is uh, you, you you get uh, for for example uh, some uh, short circuit uh, phenomena in this material? Because I I I am not uh, too familiar with, with this kind of material, but 
uh, I just curious, is there any uh, some phenomenon of uh, short shift wave because uh, you have uh, the uh, proton and electron uh, flow in the same uh, material? Thank you. Uh, you mean the uh, short circuit or the, the question is uh, what kind of phenomena you are short, 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 short circuit short circuit because because we, you have you have a uh, proton and uh, electron uh. flow in in the same time and in uh. the same material yeah, yeah. is there any kind of phenomena like that so it or just uh, it works uh, just uh, how to say the flow uh, uh, in the same time but Mm. There is no, maybe, uh -huh. maybe some, some barrier, I, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, got it, got it, got it. So as you, as you, <laughs> as you know, the electron move very quickly, some protein, because the weight is very, very fast. So the, I think an electron should move very fast, but the proton moves slow. So the important thing is the uh, balance to balance to the conductivity. So that was challenging. So we try to improve proton conductivity than electrical conductivity. But uh, I am not sure the how to how 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 the, the ratio how the what ratio to conductivity is best or not. <laughs> but uh, it's sure electron move quickly. So we have to uh, improve proton conductivity for in mixed conducting, co in mixed conducting materials. This is a design principle. Thank you for the answer. Thank you. Okay, uh, any, any other question? Thank you for a nice presentation, Professor Suya. Uh, I have two questions. First question is, uh, you have doped uh, using the cerium cation to the uh, graphene oxide to improve not only conductivity but also the stability in water. Could you explain how the contribution of cerium cation to improve the, uh, the stability in water? And my second question is, is it possible to get the tritium, tritium from tritium gas by condensing the, the gas state to become liquid state. Thank you. Okay, so last question, the, you mean the liqu liquefaction of D2? Yeah, it's possible, but uh, we cannot do it by geo. <laughs> yeah, the hydrogen, the compression is not so difficult. Okay, the bits can be compressed in, in, into liquid. Yeah, it's possible, but uh, the, by geo, we cannot do it. And the last question, uh, the, the first question, the, 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 the how to work uh, serial. And um, so I think uh, one, one reason that the, the uh, serial has a uh, the oxidation catalytic activity and then the let's say the cerium oxidizes the nanosheets and then we have holes many and then proton conductivity improved because of this hole. The, as you see this model the mainly proton diffuse in this direction. But difficult to diffuse this reaction. Mainly, uh, proton diffusion happens in between nanosheet or holes. So the important thing is to improve the number of holes in nanosheet. But if you have many holes, the stability decreases. So th this is a challenge. And then the stability issue, in the case of stability issue, uh, the, this is uh, just a model. So we have to confirm this is uh, correct or not. But uh, as you see, the serine 4 plus has a, let's say, very high balance number. And then uh, usually the carboxy group are protonated, no protonated. So this, is, this should be a minus, okay? This should be minus. 
at the, uh, the neutral conditions. So uh, CM4 plus attach here, and attach here. Okay? And then this is this works like a group for two nanosheets. I think that's that's uh, our idea. Okay, uh, the next uh, are you? Uh, I think and this is very interesting because uh, especially for the uh, Seria GO. Have you ever considered uh, utilizing that material for the electrochemical hydrogen compressor? Because I know that there is a company that they develop the hydrogen compressor and I am certain they are still using PT carbon at the um, catalyst layer. So maybe using the CEGO maybe it's possible to decrease the cost as well, right? That's not that one question. And there is another question. This is regarding about the GOS, the hydrogen uptake. Have you ever uh, calculated about the hydrogen uh, uptake from the GO material? Uh, because I'm sure now it's uh, quite a hot issue, especially me. I'm from the company that currently are also starting doing a hydrogen business in Indonesia. So I think hydrogen storage matter is very important for us to, to develop the hydrogen ecosystem. And the last maybe, this is about the GO for the catalyst for biomass comparison. Uh, actually, Harasin say actually is uh, my uh, defense. Oh. During my defense, it's my examiner, <laughs> Harasin say. And I just wonder because uh, when we see the process, it seems uh, it's quite a uh, high temperature and harsh. Mm -hmm. And still in this slide, uh, actually GO is not stable enough, right? So how to solve the problem? Mm -hmm. Because yes, indeed you have good result, but mm -hmm. maybe stability for the catalyst will be questionable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a very great question. And uh, thank you very much for a uh, very uh, useful uh, suggestion. For biomass conversion, so yeah, the, the stability is a big issue. Uh, um, for example, uh, in this case, the uh, temperature is about 200 degrees C. At this temperature, the oxygen, oxygen function group dissolved. Yeah, that's the issue. So to solve uh, this problem, we use the uh, reducible oxide. And then we use the uh, subcritical water. So subcritical water has a high ion product. So it's a, a little bit acid. Acidity is high. And then the, the reduced graphene oxide has a the high surface area and then produce many reaction sites. And the great thing is under the uh, microwave condition, the heating the heating is much more easy with graphene uh, reduced graphene oxide. So by combination of RGO and uh, a microwave and the subcritical water, we got the uh, nice yield of glucose at the even uh, high temperature. And then this catalyst, the easy to recycle, and they show uh, nice the uh, activity after reuse. Yeah, that's our solution. Okay. And then the second question: uh, hydrogen capture. Uh, maybe uh, we have many uh, interlayers in a membrane. So hydrogen coming from the air, air or uh, gas phase, maybe get inside the membrane. So we uh, we have idea to uh, produce hydrogen catching material based on geo. Okay. And then the first question is a uh, yeah, very useful suggestion. Yeah. Uh, mm. So let's have a <laughs> talk <laughs> later. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, time is almost over, and uh, we before we close, uh, if you approach that so I have uh, some uh, statement or for closing this open class. Again, thank you very much for giving me this great opportunity to give my uh, 
to show you my result. And uh, I look for future collaboration with ITS people. And uh, I also look for, looking for uh, the, let's say, having the motivated ITS students in our group in Kumamoto University. Okay. Now we have a double degree program or something, but uh, we will have another program to activate our relationship. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, finally, we come to, we come to uh, the end of this uh, uh, keynote speaker session. And thank you very much again from Tetsuya and all of participants. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And yeah, uh, have a nice day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you to Professor Tetsuya Kida as the keynote speaker session of the eye opening session and Dr. Agung Purniawan STME for guiding this session excellently as our honored moderator. Thank you as well to the participants for digging deeper and delivering your questions to Professor Tetsuya Kida. In great appreciation of our keynote speakers, on behalf of the Department of Material and Metallurgical Engineering and the ECOMAT team, I would like to call on Dr. Agung Purniawan as the moderator to come back to the stage and present a token of appreciation in the form of souvenir and certificate to our keynote speakers. To Dr. Agung Purniawan, you may come back to the stage to give the souvenirs. And I would like to invite the first speaker back to the stage, Dr. Wahyu Bambang Widiatno, to receive the souvenir and certificate as well. I would like to call on uh, Professor Tatsuya Kida as well to come back to the stage to receive the token of appreciation. Thank you. We hope that Professor Tetsuya Kida and Dr. Wahyu Bambang Widiatno had a memorable time at the 5th International Conference on Materials and Metallurgical Engineering and Technology 2022. Once again, thank you for the insights. We would like to say thank you to Dr. Agung Poniawan STMN as well for guiding the keynote speaker sessions for today. Let's give another round of applause. Excellencies, the next agenda will be the parallel sessions. To tell you about these sessions, it will be divided into different rooms where each room will have an invited speaker who will discuss a certain topic. The division for the first session is as follows. Room 1 is for advanced manufacture and process. Room 2, material modeling and optimization. Room 3, metallurgy manufacture. Room 4, materials for energy conversion, transport and storage and Room 5, Advanced Materials and Nanotechnologies. Excellencies, the parallel sessions is going to be as exciting as the main event. But not just machines, even human needs energy to move. So before that, we are going to have a coffee break. You can get your snacks and drinks on the sides. Please be reminded that the coffee break is 30 minutes until 11 a.m. 
After you have finished, we are going to have our parallel sessions where you may go straight to the rooms as mentioned before. To the delegates that have finished presenting during the parallel sessions, you may get your certificates at the front desk. Before the dismissal, we would like to highly encourage distinguished delegates to gain plenty knowledge throughout the event and gain the best result, as the awards will be given to the best paper and the best presentation. The selection will be determined by the ECOMET team. Since the main session has ended, our duty today has finished. We'll see you again tonight for the gala dinner at Bumi Surabaya Hotel at 6 p.m. I am Oriza alongside my partner Faisal Bits Farewell. We hope you enjoy the conference. That is it for now. Have a good break and a fruitful session ahead. Thank you.